There they go, already oh. beginning to nibble away at all of those SCVs, having to pull back right now. And Thorzane just calmly pulls back, doesn't overreact, waiting for those two ghosts to pop out and building a second starport. Uh-oh, looks like a little bit more lag popped out. Poor Chill having a little bit of the internet's issue, and wow, Naniwa. You I have no see. idea what's going on. I'm, I apologize to everyone involved. We're going to once again have to wait for an official judgment from the referees, but you can already tell. Okay. You can already tell Naniwa having a little bit of pressure. So, hey, Chill ended up leaving the game. Naniwa says, go, go, go. A solo cast, it may be. We do see now that the two Colossi are continuing to pick away at that refinery up on the high ground. Thorzane just calmly pulling everything back. His ghost has now popped out. It has 54 energy. The Vikings have just emerged. We're really seeing how fragile it can be to opt for those two medevacs first. So much time was lost, but now that these Vikings have arrived, that is going to pretty much put an end to this kind of aggression. We see Thorzane having amazing positioning. Oh, a huge cluster of SCVs gets knocked out by those Colossi. We see Naniwa in a great position. There's the scan from Thorzane. Zane. He sees how many units are there. He will likely not want to engage. Naniwa continuing to slowly nibble away four more pylons going down in Naniwa's main. No more probes are being produced right now. Just Colossi and Gateway units. This is a huge push for Protoss. More Vikings trying to be produced. Some good damage being dealt from Thorzane to those Colossi, but none have yet been killed. So we do see the Ghost moving forward and oh! Gets a huge cluster of units. Great, great EMP. Thorzane may very well just push that from above, but we do see that Naniwa is slowly getting a bigger and bigger food lead. If he can end up picking off those Colossi, that would be gigantically advantageous. But we see those Vikings still continuing to be produced two or three at a time. Nothing too noteworthy from either player other than this huge push. No expanding, no teching, both players devoting everything. Thorzane to the defense, Naniwa to the offense. We see those medevacs continue to try to heal, and ooh, that's a little bit bit too close for Naniwa. Naniwa trying to be very, very careful with that Colossus control. And there we see, there's the advance forward. Another great EMP. And it looks like Thorzane is increasingly, increasingly starting to get that gitchy. He's starting to get that feeling that it might be time to bust down the front door. Now keep in mind that if Naniwa loses these Colossi, he'll be in an atrocious spot. And there's a Marine spotter outside the front. Thorzane sees it. Naniwa might be going for the huge push, but does he have enough energy on those sentries? There's the Vikings doing some big damage. No Colossi has yet fallen. Still big energy on all of those sentries. Plenty of force field available needs to ghost EMP those off but does he have the energy yes he barely now has the energy here's the push forward there's the scan where are the ghosts and there's the EMP manages to get all of those sentries one Colossus down Nani one not in a great spot two Colossi now have fallen and it looks like Thorzane baited Naniwa into just the right spot. The whole push from Naniwa getting absolutely decimated. The push that was at the back door did not do the damage it needed to. And now Thorzane has equalized the playing field. The foods are matched 93 to 87, but Thorzane has the 1-1 upgrades, has the ghosts, has the Vikings. Naniwa trying to pull back. Thorzane may have done the unthinkable and pulled the reverse all kill but Naniwa is not done fighting yet continuing to throw down force fields but we see the Thorzane now pushing faster and faster and faster forward Naniwa in a complete and total retreat now trying to morph in more sentries and Naniwa having a collapse of focus 2,000 minerals in the bank and not enough gateways to spend it six gateways are down now Thorzane pulling back needs to devote some time to killing off the destructible rocks so he can take himself another expansion Naniwa still has so much money for more gateways being produced right now, but no upgrades for those gateway units. No plus attack, no plus armor, no charge, and no blink. A gigantic, gigantically tough position for the Protoss player to be in. We see Thorzane doing his classic sprint forward with the Marines, and even though uh, Thorzane did that amazing push forward. Keep in mind that he only has three barracks and he will soon be up against 10 gateway production. 
Thorzane has a very cute army that can function well in middleish to small numbers, but he does not have a big army. So this is going to be the real kicker for Thorzane, who still has not taken an expansion. Naniwa, who seemed like he might be an inch from losing himself, has managed to get all those gateways up. We'll be morphing into warp gates soon enough, and Naniwa still having the focus, knowing that the late game is what's going to be essential for him, is taking himself that third base. So now we see Thorzane doing the exact same, and it looks like both players are going to be opting for the later stages of the game. Now with those 10 warp gates done right now, we even see Oopsie Daisy's Naniwa chrono boosted his robotics facility that wasn't actually researching anything at that point in time. So a little bit of an uncharacteristic misclick there by Naniwa. More units getting morphed in from Naniwa. They're going to all be zealots, but with absolutely no speed. The Marauders can do a good amount of kiting, but come to the unit counting station. 21 zealots, 12 stalkers, and just 18 Marauders, and just 14 Marines. Not a big army for Thorzane. He's going to have to have the best ghost EMPs known to man if he wants to be able to do that kind of damage. But still only three barracks. Is he getting his usual 2-2? Two -two? No. No armory anywhere yet. Thorzane knows how narrow of a position this is right now. We see Naniwa beginning to advance forward. And Thorzane's army is not in a good spot. It is trapped down at the south area. This is going to be a very, very tense moment. Thorzane knows that he's trying to see if there's any way he can sneak back to his home to be able to join up with reinforcements. It will not be the case. Two scans go down from Thorzane. And some great EMPs go down. He does get some Guardian Shields off. But Thorzane Thorzane knows that this push timing is essential, hides behind the remaining force fields, the Colossi getting one shot and he's trying to pick up the Colossi as rapidly as he can, but look at the gateway unit count from Naniwa, can Thorzane push it back? He does manage to repel this aggression, but does he have the unit lead? There are still so many gateway units on the map for Naniwa. Thorzane just picking up the scraps as there is a retreat back to the base. And no, Thorzane is very dangerous in that spot at the bottom of the ramp. He could have gotten cut in half by any number of force fields and lost tremendous amounts of units. Still three barracks only for Thorzane. Three barracks against the ten gateways of Naniwa. We see the mains are essentially mined out for both players. Thorzane having to transfer all those workers to his third. Look at the probe difference. 40 SCVs for Thorzane, 47 for Naniwa. Neither player has a particularly high worker count. So it's still a very intense moment. There are finally two more barracks going down for Thorzane. Has not had a second of time to breathe. Both players playing under absolutely tremendous pressure. We have just passed the 20 minute mark again. We've seen that in the longer games, Naniwa tends to have the advantage, but we see no Twilight Council. We see no Forges. We see no tech to anything but these basic gateway units and the Colossus. Both players having essentially big mid-game armies, but because because we see Thorzane does have the ghost tech and does have some Vikings out, he's able to deal with this slightly better. And oh, look at this. Here's a funny little fact. Only just now researching Concussive Shell, Thorzane waited till the 21 minute mark to find 50 extra minerals and 50 extra gas with which to research that Concussive Shell. We do see Thorzane now does have his third base up and operational, muling it as rapidly as he can. Naniwa still getting more sentries, still getting more zealots, but no, once again, no Twilight Council. Oh my goodness, here comes a huge push from Naniwa, and once again, Thorzane having the seeming anti-timing, cutting off a lot of his units at the south side, and oh no, you do not want to see that army trade going on right now. Thorzane has managed to swing his army around to take out this third base. Naniwa does not want to take the risk. He's pulling back. Naniwa has lost his expansion. Naniwa's expo. Some of those mineral patches only have 40 minerals remaining. Naniwa must do amazing amounts of damage with this force, but he needs to spread out those sentries. The ghost EMPing from Thorzane has always been too good all game long. We see more units from Thorzane managing to sneak their way around that south end by the watchtower and rejoin with the army. Here's the ghost advancing forward. Gets a good EMP off, but not nearly as many sentries as in the previous ones. And now we see those colossi trying to poach forward 
forward to the front trying to pick off those ghosts. This is so intense at this moment. And there the ghosts moving forward. Managed to EMP again, but only 100 energy. They will pick off with those EMPs. There's still a lot of force fields available. The Viking count is ridiculously high from Thorzane, and I'm having heart palpitations. I do not know how much longer I can handle this. This is so tense. 91 now moving forward with the Zealot, trying to get a good sense of what's up, but Thorzane not overreacting, just a single lone stim. We see more ghosts advancing from the right side, does not quite have enough energy, and Naniwa just patiently waiting for all the shields to reheal. The Colossus now finishing a lone marine in the natural expansion of Naniwa. Naniwa has no more money left at that expo. Everything's basically broke. It will all come down to this final fight. There's the advancement forward. We see no EMPs yet. There's some EMPs about to get cast. A big one on all of those sentries. The Viking count ridiculously high, but the gateway units are just overwhelming. Uh, Thorzane's units, and it looks like the Viking count is going to be enough. It picks off the Colossus. Thorzane makes the surround, and good game! Thorzane does it! The incredible reverse comeback, down one to three, pulling it back four to three. Incredible play by Thorzane, who had the hardest path oh through this tournament, God. knocking out Fruit Dealer, knocking out Tyler, knocking out OGSMC, knocking out Empire Koss, and in the grand final, he manages to defeat the man who was 35 and 0 in his best of anything. Incredible play by Thorzane, making a mark in StarCraft 2 that we will never forget. That was unbelievable. I I do not envy your position in that game, Day 9. I was sitting from the observer slot and it was fantastic. Thorzane coming back, completing the Cinderella story to the T. Going all the way as the underdog every time, going down 1-3, and then reversing the sweep. Unbelievable play by him, and he's still so handsome. I cannot believe that amazing calm, that amazing focus against the 4 warp gate in match point holds it off. Up against a 6 warp gate all in, barely holds it off. In that final game, having Colossi barreling down his back door all game long, and he defends and pulls the miracle with amazing EMPs, with remarkable unit composition, and an uncanny calm. So let's go take an interview with that winner of the Team Liquid Star League, Mouse Sports Thorzane.